let's get let's get cracking. Um, I, I, you know, well, I just want to say to everyone as they're coming in, huge thank you for for coming along. Um, it really is appreciated that people have taken an active role in getting engaged with bits and pieces, and hopefully these sessions are still of use to you. Um, one of the big things I will say is if there is anything that you want to see covered or uh, anything that you feel that we've missed or you'd like to go back over, please drop a message to uh, Beth, Lisa or myself because we're, we're more than happy to, to go over bits and pieces. Now, what I normally find, especially with some of the digital learning tools, um, in, in a way, I like to kind of start backwards. I like to start with a problem. And that's what tonight's session came about from. It was a, a problem that we noticed uh, and I've noticed observing teachers uh, and kind of going, well, how can I solve that? Rather than look at here's a tool, how can I use it? I'm going, well, how, here's a problem, how can I solve it? So if you have any sort of problems or any sort of things and you go, I'm not sure how to do that, please drop one of us a message because um, it makes me work harder, makes me find some stuff or we may already be aware of something. The aim for tonight is to go over a number of tools. It's called voting in collaboration. But where we looked at voting previously, I showed some tools and went, here's some tools. Um, I want to go, well, here's some tools. How can we use them in many different ways? So, you know, the focus now is on using them asynchronously as well as using them synchronously in the classroom or online. Uh, I am going to start with some ideas that we can use with maybe primary education and then build up to go, well, how can we use it for those who are working in secondary education and even further education, higher education? The problem that I have found a lot of the time is that we're using these voting tools. I'm seeing them used, but I don't see that next step. And that next step for me is thinking how we're getting students to start critically thinking about using them. And working with them. So the aim tonight is to look at uh, how we can use Jamboard to build some sort of voting and collaboration tools and some sharing ideas. Then I want to start looking at Pear Deck, how we integrate that with uh, Google Slides and also PowerPoint, how that can be brought into it. Um, I want to look a little bit at Mentimeter again because I still think that's a great tool that people would kind of benefit from knowing. And then I want to look at using Microsoft Forms just go into a little bit of information about how we can use the results from that. So there is quite a lot involved. Again, if I do go a bit too quick on anything, please drop a message in the chat box and one of us will shout at me. Um, if something comes up, I'm talking and it's not on the screen, again, just shout and we'll go from there. So let's start the work. So I'm just gonna share my screen. Here we go. So what I want to start with tonight is using Google Jamboard. Now, for those that don't know about Google Jamboard and where Google Jamboard is, um, if, if you just go to, let's just go straight to, to Google, go from there. On your main page, you'll see it under the apps, just the, the dots at the top. And if you scroll down, you'll see Jamboard there. Now, Jamboard is a completely free tool that you can use and you can have as many Jamboards as your Google Drive will allow, um, which I think is, I think, I think you get about two gigabytes worth of free drive space, which is probably about a million of these. You won't use a whole entire drive of, of Jamboards. So what I wanna start with tonight is looking at how we can use Jamboard for collaboration, voting, bits and pieces like that. So what I'm going to start with, here is my blank canvas. Let me just move that out of the way. Now, what we can do with using a Jamboard, the nice thing with it, is we can start with, let's take the ideas of how a Padlet works. Now, Padlet is a great collaboration tool, but it does cost money, and we want to save as much as possible. So I'm going to start with just a real basic tool here, and that's going to be this idea of the voting tool. How can we use a voting tool? So, Using the sticky notes on the left hand side, I'm going to give a, a scenario and I'm going to put my question in there. So there's my first question, yes or no. I'm going to make that a different colour. Now, there are loads of really good voting tools out there. Um, a huge amount of them are third party, which you do have to pay for. And I'm thinking, well, why don't we just use this real simple one here? Now, 
with this one here, I'm just going to design it where it says circle. You can click on that and you can get other shapes. I'm just going to put a simple barrier in and we'll give that a little color. There we go, lovely. And there we go, we've built my very basic voting tool. Now for the question that's gonna come up, I want students to vote yes or no. You can have some other things here. Who was better, Henry VIII or, you know, the Queen? I don't know, choice is yours really. Now, what we can do in this scenario, I'm just gonna give it a name. I'm gonna call it voting. Click okay. And then I'm just going to share this. Now you have a number of options with the share. For those that have access to Google Classroom, I can share this. So I can get a link. And then let's go to my Google Classroom. There's my classroom group. And I can either put this, uh, set this as an assignment. So I'm going to go to classwork. I'm going to go create. I'm going to set this as a assignment for them. I'm going to put it vote on your plan. And then what I'm going to do is I can either add it straight from my Google Drive, which if I click my Google Drive, there's my most recent one, or I can add it as a hyperlink. But I'm just going to go Google Drive and insert. Now, if you're using Google Classroom, you want students to vote on this, you have a few options to remember. Students can view the file. They can edit the file or they can make a copy for each student. If you want the entire class to be able to edit it and all add to one voting board, which is kind of what I want to do, I'm going to go for students can edit the file. If I want one vote and I want the votes to be anonymous, I'd make a copy for each student. Now, the issue here is that you're then going to have to vote in. And you're going to have to count each of them. But if I have it as students can edit the file, and assign that, what that comes up on, if we go to the stream of the Google Classroom, students can see the assignment, they can click on it, and then they can, I can see who has completed that work. And then simply for the student, you just say to them, well, just put a sticky note and go, you know, so Keith, and he puts his little sticky note where he wants to vote, and the students can do this. Really simple voting tool to have there. Now, the great thing again with this, and this is what I'm saying about, let's take the vote and let's move on to the next level. With Jamble, what you get is this option for the next question, and we can create the next frame. And I think this is something that Padlet has missed out on, is having this options to, to build from it. And I think this is a great thing with Jamboard. Is now I can start using this and I can go, um, what informed, your decision. You may use different language for this. And I can have that there. Again, what might be good is just to have a little text box at the bottom here. So I may have a little text that says, once voted, click to see the next slide. There we go. Help if I can spell. There we go. So now the students are uh, moving on to the next one. So do children need a login for Google Classroom? Now, if you use Google Classroom, then they will need that Gmail login. However, if you don't use Google Classroom, you want to utilize this, when I've created it, I just go to share. And what I can do here is I can get a link and I can go to change to anyone with the link. And then I copy that link. So I've got to make sure that it goes from viewer to editor. So if I don't use Google Classroom, I can just get a copy link. I can put it in Teams. I can put it in Moodle. I can send it via email. In fact, what I can do, if I copy this link, I'll just put it in the chat box. And if I just put this into the chat box for everyone, and I'll just put the, pay, the copy the, the link in. If you click on that link right now that's in the chat box, you'll be able to see my Jamboard. And if it's OK, Vote yes or no. Have a go, see if that works for you. Thank you, Claire. Thank you, Rianne. Lovely, good. So we can see how straight away, this is a real simple methodology for voting. Um, lots of people are voting for, for me to get rid of my dog, which is a bit unfair. Um, so we can see how now, 
in the classroom, learners have got that opportunity to make something. And it is so simple. It is so clear. You can use it whether you use Google Classroom or not. OK, it's going a little bit haywire here. Emma says, Emma, no. So, and those who have got access on it now, what you should be able to do is if you click to the next slide, you do this student paste as well. And I think that's the key thing. This is in live time, but it can also be set as a student paste activity. Once you've added that, you can click to the slide at the top and maybe you can add a little thing on there if you want. Somebody's there and they're really thinking about, I love dogs, fantastic, great. <laughs> I, I would never get rid of Steve. There we go, the evidence is just, he is a lovely dog, but he's, um, Steve, stop eating your stomach. There we go. So a real simple voting tool, doesn't cost any money, uh, and it's something that's quite fun and interactive for students to see. I like the fact that they can see as their votes move around the room. So I am going to get rid of that. So sorry about that. Thank you for taking part in that wonderful that wonderful vote. Can I be using Seesaw? Again, it's just a hyperlink. So all of these things, because it is just a hyperlink, can just be dropped in and they just click onto it. So it is uh, a, a useful tool for that. Now, Again, this is something that came up. Uh, I was talking to somebody, we were talking about using Jamboard, um, and the idea was going, um, yeah, it's okay, it's good for that. Well, I think it's uh, a tool is always as good as, as your imagination, how you play with it. So, one of the questions that came up with was somebody wanted to get a, um, a, a Venn diagram, and they were like, is there a tool? where we can have a Venn diagram. Is there a, a, an application online? I was going, well, a Jamboard is a great way of doing a Venn diagram. Um, to, to, oh, by the way, uh, someone just added a question. If they do not have a Gmail account, can they edit the jam assigned to them from a Teams task? Yeah, it, it, as soon as they log in, it will just, uh, um, as soon as they click the link, it will take them to it. Um, they can go in as a guest. So, with a Venn diagram, the benefit I always liked about this was it starts to take this collaborative idea to, again, that critical level. So what I'm going to do for the simple, uh, simplistic of a Venn diagram, I'm just going to draw, I'm going to do this as a, as a simple two circle one. It's a lot easier. So I'm going to do one circle. Now what I'm going to do here, and what's key is once you've done the circle, hit that little paint bucket at the top there and make it transparent. There's a, there's a reason why. And then I'm just going to copy and paste that circle. So if I copy it and I paste, the reason to make it transparent is you want that middle section there of the Venn diagram. It's really important. Otherwise, you just have two overlapping circles and it looks rubbish. Uh, I'm going to make this a little bit larger just to make it a bit clearer, because what you'll find is once you put the post-it notes on, um, it does become a little bit difficult. So let's say, for example, I want to do a, a Venn diagram, which looks at I don't know, differences and similarities between cats and dogs. So I'm going to put here uh, cats, and then I'm going to have on the next one, dogs. You know, again, this is something that can be used at any uh, kind of all levels of education, really. I had one before, which was difference between mentoring and coaching and the similarities between a mentor and a coach. We had leaders and managers, and what's the similarities between leaders and managers? Um, the, the students don't need a Jamboard app. Um, it's, um, it's, it's just an online tool. And this is someone uh, added a question here uh, Can it be downloaded and completed offline? Uh, no, it's a web based tool. So it has to be online for it to be completed. So here's my Venn diagram. Again, what I'm going to do now, uh, so anything that's, that cats have goes in there, anything that dogs have goes in there, anything that's the same between a cat and a dog goes in this middle section. So I'm going to share this, same as last time, I'm just going to make sure, at the moment it's restricted, but I want it to be anybody with the link, and I want to make sure that they can edit it. Copy the link, and then just put it straight into. And you can just click on that link 
And again, you can now start playing around with that element there. There we go. So someone's put, so if you put, that's brilliant. So again, this is a very simple idea. You can take it really far with regards to it um, at all levels of education. Um, yeah, great. Davina's put here, Jamboard works brilliantly. I think it's one of those tools where when people see it, because it's so simplistic, they go, oh, it's not really useful now. The tool's always as good as the, what you decide to do with it and your imagination with it. Who's put here that cats are loving? Yeah, there's always one. Now, the key thing and, and the great thing with Jamboard, it does get automatically saved. <laughs> Sniff that back. Thank you for that. Um, you know, I'll put it in. I'll just give it a, a file name. There we go. It does get saved onto your drive. So once you've, um, if I go back to my, my kind of Jamboard page here, it will always be saved. So I can go back, I can access it. If I click on my vote, so this is one that we created ages ago, I can hit this more actions. I can download it as a PDF. Now, let's look at a, a potential problem because again, start with problems and we always find solutions. The one thing with the Venn diagram we started to notice is that it gets quite tight and full. If you've got a class of 20, 20 people all adding post-it notes onto it, it starts to get really cluttered. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna, sorry everybody, just stop pasting stuff because I'm gonna clear it and I'm gonna start again. There we go. So I'm going to make my Venn diagram and I'm going to make it transparent. Let's do another one. Again, make that one transparent and switch it over. And I'll do my, my quick text. Again, something like this. You know, if you've just got a quick idea, there we go, we've made it. You'll use capital letters. Now, what I want to do here is. I've got one, but I want to set it to separate groups. If I go to these three at the top here, I can go make a copy. And I can call this Venn diagram two. And I can share that, brilliant. And I can make a few. And then what I can do then is once I've got that group two, group one, group three and so on and I can share that out again I can just give them a link and each link will be separate to that group so if you do have a Venn diagram and you do want to have five work on one five work on another you you can share it out that way and it is quite nice so again Jamboard is a great way of getting them to collaborate share vote on an idea Let's look at one other final uh, tool that we can use for it. And again, this came from uh, a problem I had. So what I found was I was doing this session here. I was looking at uh, Clutterbox roles and a mentor. And I was thinking that there's a bit more of an advanced one than this, but I was thinking, could I make this an interactive activity? Could I make this a bit of a, a, a game for them to use offline? So my thinking was, can I make this here an activity? So I thought, yeah, of course I can. So I went to Jamboard. And my intention was to make something where I wanted them to think about, you know, what hits each of the areas of, of Clutterbuck's model. So my, my job here is I'm going to recreate this model here and I'm going to make it a little bit of a, a game where they have to collaborate, they have to think, they have to critique which of these roles hit within the Learning Alliances model. So let's build it nice and simple. This is the key thing with this. I'm going to build the axes. Let me just paint this in. There we go. That's lovely. And I'm just going to do another one. There we go. Look at that. Arts. That's, uh, that's where I uh, can get my skills from. So I'm now going to copy this exactly directed and undirected challenging nurturing. So I'm just going to put my text in. Uh, just. 
again, just copy and paste these as you can do that. Now, the intention here is I want something where I'm asking the students to critically think about something rather than just me just tell them this is what I want you to do. Because this is one of the things I've noticed with my a lot of my student teachers when they're, they're starting out is they, they are quite still didactic in how they teach something. And I'm always saying, well, why don't you why don't you kind of take a little step further? And they go, oh, I'll do it as a quiz. And I go, let's not do it as a quiz. Because after a while, you'd be amazed at how many quizzes can get a little bit boring. So what I've done now, once I've created this properly, there we go, I've recreated a Clutterbuck's model. And what I want to have is I want it to be something where the students in groups will uh, consider um, the which setting it goes into. So let's just put this guardian. Uh, next one's facilitator and counselor. There we go. Go. And then one of the last one is, is counselor. Lovely. Okay. And there we go. I've I've created an activity. And I can share this with students. I can say to them, OK, what I'd like you to do, put the instructions, you know, maybe I'll put the instructions here, uh, map, uh, post it with the correct portion. Again, you can make your instructions a lot better than mine, but you've got a very simple activity and move that along and allow that. Uh, so something to put here, can you set up each page with the same image and then click on each one to view? So if you want to have, say for example, I want to have this, so I can share this, download, save this frame as an image. Um, so I'm going to have that one then. So say for example, if you want to make it a little bit easier for you, um, you can save it as an image uh, or you can copy the slide. There is a way of copying the slide. So if I duplicate it, there we go. I can duplicate it across. So now I've got one, two, three. And then maybe I want to put in there team one, team two, team three. So if you do want to have, um, uh, someone's just put a great question there, which was, um, can I duplicate it? Uh, what you do is click on this, expand the frame bar, and then just right hand click and then hit duplicate. So then I can write on here, you know, say I want to have team one, and maybe I want to put their names, the next one I have as team two, and so on. So what I can do now, again, anyone can edit this. Uh, I'll copy the link, put it in the chat box, and the activity is for you to drag over and think, well, where does a coach? Are they a challenging directive person or are they a non-directive but challenging person? Where do they go to? And it, it's all about thinking, I've made something which you'll share with students and get them to consider, get them to think, and get rather than just me go, well, where do you think it should go? Or, or this is where it should go. And this is what he says. I'm trying to use digital tools for them to uh, critique, vote, discuss, as opposed to purely just, well, what do you think? I want them to really kind of take it to that next level, really. A coach is not nurturing and directive. I definitely wouldn't put it there. No. Put, it up. put it up a little bit more. Uh, any questions at all on, on Jamboard? Can this be integrated with MS Teams? Yes. So if I want this into MS Teams, what I would do here is I'll just go share, copy the link, and then in Teams, you just add it as um, like a chat bar, it's just a hyperlink that you just paste in and go click the link to access the Jamboard. Um, so it, it, this is the kind of the good thing about it again, simplicity, um, and it can be used across platforms. The only thing that is limited with it 
is that it can't be embedded as a label. So if you use Moodle and you like to embed it and have it on the actual page, you can only put it in as a hyperlink. That's a key thing with that. Correct one with coach. It's good. Any other questions on Jamboard at all? I could bang on about this all day because I think it's, um, I like it. It's a good platform. One of the things that does come up is, can you lock the background to stop children from moving them? So if I don't want them to move this, the, the best thing I would say, if you don't want them to move that whole thing there, then what I would say, the best thing would be, um, so in, on your computer, if you type in a snipping tool, uh, take a new snip, and then I would, once you've made your thing, I would uh, take it as a picture, and then I would save that as an image. So if I save this as an image to my desktop, there we go. And then if I go to a, a brand new one, I can add uh, a picture. So go to my images here, uh, upload it from my computer. Let's go to my desktop. Uh, what do I call it? Capture. There we go. And I've now made it as a, as a picture. Now it, it won't be locked. That's the one thing with it. You know, if they want to move the whole thing around, they can do. There we go. If you just make it really big, hopefully they won't play around with it too much. Um, but there we go. You can just make it as a picture. So that's using the snipping tool that you have on your toolbar. So hopefully that's been of use. OK. So that's using Jamboard for creating some voting, collaboration, critical thinking tools. Hope that's been useful. The next thing I want to look at is uh, something I, I looked at a while ago, uh, and I just kind of want to go back to it, which is using something called Pear Deck. Now, Pear Deck is an add-on on, on uh, Google Slides. So if you go to, say you're creating a, a slideshow on, on your presentation here, um, if you haven't got Pear Deck, when you open up a, a presentation, Make sure, firstly, it's a, it's a Google slide presentation. If you start with Google Slides, you'll see add-ons. The issue here, and I'll show you how to get around it, say, for example, you upload, because you can upload a PowerPoint. So I uploaded a PowerPoint from earlier. So here's a PowerPoint I put into Google Slides. You'll notice add-ons isn't there. Okay, I'll explain how to get around that in a minute. But if you go to creating a, a PowerPoint presentation, here's my blank presentation, you'll see add-ons on your toolbar. And what you're going to do on here is go add-ons and then go to get add-ons. Now there's loads of little tools that they've added into the, the Google Workspace. And one of them is Pear Deck. Again, if you just click on that, you should be able to install it. Any issues, talk to your IT admin team. Uh, they may have put restrictions on what you can add to your computer uh, or you can download. If they, they stop that, then just use Jamboard. That's the key thing. Now, Pear Deck, for those that haven't used it before, is um, it has the basic version, it has the premium version. The premium version has got lots of little other extra bits and pieces, um, but I think for the money, you could really just use another tool quite easily and, and save yourself a, you know, a huge amount in the, in the long run, really. So I, I don't really get the worries about it. So if we go to my presentation, go to my add-ons, we're going to go here to Pear Deck and open Pear Deck add-on. But what I'm going to start with is I, I'm going to go back to my Google Slides. I'm going to show you the issue with if you say, for example, you already have a presentation you've made on PowerPoint and you want to include some voting elements into it. Now, if you put a PowerPoint into it, which you can do, you can open a PowerPoint into it. So here's a PowerPoint, lovely. Um, you won't have the add-on section. Now, what you're going to do here is go to File and save it as Google Slides. 
Now, if you save it as Google Slides, what you'll see is you'll see the same presentation, but now I have this logo here, which is your Google Slides logo. So if I open this one, you'll now see the add-ons is at the top. So if you do have a PowerPoint and you do want to have it um, with the, the voting software and bits and pieces like that, make sure it's saved as a Google Slides one. Let's go to our add-ons. And I'm going to Pear Deck and I'm going to open Pear Deck. Now, Pear Deck, you can create your own account for it. Students won't need to create an account to utilize the questions that you ask. This is key, really. But what we can add is we can add a, a few different bits and pieces which are completely free. So we can have a, a text question where maybe we have something written on here. So let's add a, a blank slide. So um, what's, what's occurring? There we go. And I can then click text. Now, what this will do is at the bottom of the page, it will add a little box that will come up when we get to that slide. Uh, so someone's asked a question here, I can't get Pear Deck with my hub account. Can I make a presentation on my personal account and then save it to my work account so I can access Pear Deck? Yes, that should work. Um, there are always ways around it. If there is a, a problem with that at all, please drop me a message because um, I'd like to make sure that's resolved. I know a lot of people are using Hub at the moment. The other things that you can do with Pear Tech, I can add a choice. So let's go to so let's go to the next slide here, um, and I'm going to have a choice here, and I'm going to look at choice could be. So what I would always say is on the on the main slide, have a have a question. So it's say for example, my question is looking at uh, issues of staff stress in the workplace. Uh, I'll just put here, not enough rest, uh, too much work, not enough fun. There we go. And you can add multiples to this. And I'm going to update this slide. Now what that's going to do is it's now added this little interactive element to the slide. I can also add numbers on there. So if I want to go to the next slide, I can add uh, another number on there. And what this will do is, you know, I could have a, a math question in there. So they type a number in based on that, or we can have um, a voting one here. And we can add that to it. There's quite a few little bits of tools on here, which I really quite like. And, the, you know, these are the basic elements that we can add to it. Now, once I've made this slideshow, and once I've opened it up, um, yeah, someone's put on here, can the poll show up on their smartphone? Yes. And I'm going to show how that happens. So when I start the lesson, I've got a couple of options. I can either do it student paced, or I can do it instructor paced. So if I have it as uh, an instructor paced activity, it means that the slides will only move along when I mask the slides to move along. Student paste, the students can move between the slides as it goes. Now, if I make it instructor paste, here we go. So the students can either put this uh, email address in, this web address into the computer and then add that code, or I can get a link. So if I give the students a link, I can then send that link to the page. What I'll do is I'll just put it in the chat box for you so you can, you can participate. There we go. If you want to click on that, that will take you to the student's view. So if I just put that in, get the student's view. There we go. This is what the students will see. And this is what I see as the teacher. So I can see how many students are now connected. So I've got seven students in my classroom. And at the moment, they can just so how are you feeling today? I'm feeling bloody wonderful. There we go. And they can't they can't move the slide along because I'm in charge and I can do what I want. So I'm now going to start the class and I'm going to go here. Here's my first one. Lovely. And there's my first question. This is the student screen. They can see the slide and they can now add their own answers. So what's occurring? Not much. There 
Now, as the teacher, this is the teacher's screen here, I can see the responses that are coming up. Yeah, students can't, but I can. And I can start to see what is on there. Someone's been for a spa. All right, that's just showing off. And I can hide the responses from there. Now, if there is any sort of issues with this, what I can do is I can do a, a, a prompt. I can add some extra bits. Maybe I want to put a question on there and I want to just check them out. So I can send these through as I go through. This is quite a nice thing. You can add these different bits and pieces on. So it does have these little extra bits and pieces you can add, especially if a question isn't, uh, kind of understood very well I can say we'll draw a picture to describe how you're feeling and I can send that to my students and now they can start drawing that so you can play around with these as you go along I can see the responses lovely and this is a, a, a nice simple collaboration tool um, but we've had enough of drawing now so I'm going to move on so you can't see the next slide there we go so now this is where we start to bring in the kind of voting element to it so you can see here that there we go you can start voting this is a student screen this is my screen teacher screen i can see the responses and i can start to see how the votes coming in and that's great Excellent. And this is something really to allow me to kind of vote and play around with. And I, I, I do get to see how it is going. And it is quite a nice tool for that. So the students vote and they play around. And that's a, the kind of the great thing with this is that you do have this option to make your slides a little bit more interactive and still keep them in. Um, and it, it's, you know, the basic setup that you get with Pear Deck, I think is enough, really. I don't think, um, you know, you need to spend a huge amount to get the, the key elements out. Do you know who's answered what question? Um, with this one, no. Uh, if you take the, um, what you can do is the, the, the full version, you get to see the names um, if you, you pay for it. But if you're looking just to get basic answers, um, you can have that. The key thing is maybe then to go, uh, so who put this answer here? That is a little limitation with the, the pair deck. Um, you know, th that's one of the key things I will say there. Now, someone's put a, a great question. Can this be used for research projects and questionnaire? I'm gonna say no. And I'm gonna show you why on the next one. It depends on firstly the level of your research project questionnaire. Um, because I think the next tool, which I'm going to show, I think is a far greater um, use for research projects and questionnaire than Pear Deck. Pear Deck is something that we use in a session for a little bit of fun uh, to engage learners. Now, once you've done your, your session, I'm going to close it down. And what I can do is I can go back into that at a later stage. So I've done my session. I'm going to hit these three lines here on my pair deck and I'm going to go to review sessions. Now, if I review the session, it'll tell me that my premium trial, I can see previous lessons that I've done. There we go. And I can click on that session. I can open the dashboard. And I can go back through. They really want me to pay for the full thing. I'm not going to. And I can go back through previously run sessions and I can see the answers that were provided and the responses. So I can go back and I can see these votes and I can see these ideas that were available there. So I can go back through that. Yeah, someone's put on there, they can be used to simply write their name. Now for the research project questionnaire, especially at level five, this is where the next, um, tool is uh, I'm going to kind of showcase, especially for something like voting. Uh, are there any, before we move on to this next one, are there any other further questions about using 
pair deck a tool with uh, Google Slides for voting in bits and pieces. Okay. So let's move away from this. Now, the next tool I do want to go through is the use of Microsoft Forms. Now, there are pros and cons with Microsoft Forms, and this is why I would kind of really say uh, it depends on the level of your students that you go, mostly because of from, uh, an aesthetic point of view, how it looks. Now, Microsoft Forms is a great tool for creating um, ways of getting research back, ways of getting answers back. And when you go onto Microsoft Forms, hit the little down arrow, we're going to go to New Form. Now, New Form will give you this blank Let's say, for example, I want to get a, do a question now or do a research project. So we'll just call this research project. So this is something our students want to do in their classroom. Um, so we can put, please complete my research project. There we go. I would suggest writing a lot more than that. It's a little bit better. And then what we can do in here is we can start to build and add our questions to it. Again, this is something that we could make to send out to our learners for maybe uh, homework, uh, kind of asynchronous work, or they could share amongst each other. Now, you get a number of options with Microsoft Forms. You can either get text. So um, let's just put, uh, maybe you just want to get their name first. Now, if you're sending this out to people who don't have uh, an Office 365 account or don't log in, uh, then you won't know who's done what. It will always be anonymous. If they log in through uh, Office 365 to complete it, so say you're doing it internally in your school and it's going out to school students who use Office 365, it will automatically have their email address. So they need that to complete this. But when you come to share this, so if I just show you the share button, I can send this out to anyone. To say if I'm sending it out to external parties, I would always suggest have a question that says, put your name and make it required. I can then put on here a few options. Now, if you're doing it as a voting tool, maybe you want to do it as a Likert scale. So I can go down here and I can put a Likert scale in. So, um, so what are your opinions? There we go. Uh, so say we have, you know, say I want to find out what people think of sports in my area, golf, football. I'll put rugby in there because I'm no doubt I'll get some grief if I don't. Uh, and, and we've got we hate. Well, I don't like the word hate. Dislike a lot. Love it. Um, and I, I can put these options here. Let's put dislike. Don't care. So this, this is my traditional scale for things on a scale of dislike a lot to love it. So this is one way of getting a little bit of a, a, a voting and opinion. I can also add, so here we've got a ranking. So I can say rank following. So, I see anyone who remembers that one and I can get rid of bits. There we go. And I can also add longer questions in here. So say I want to have a large typed answer. I would hit long answer and go, you know, explain, you know, Hamlet. There we go, that'll do. So what we've created here is quite a nice simple tool. I can change the theme to make it a little bit more user-friendly, again, depending on the, the age of the group. I can add, I can customize by adding my own background theme. So say, for example, I've, I wanna upload an image, I've got access to Bing, or I can upload one from my computer. So if you wanna make, you know, say you wanna put a picture of your school setting or your work setting or the logo, you can do that, it's absolutely fine. Now, with Microsoft Forms, I can preview it. And, and the great thing I like about the preview uh, it's designed for both the computer and also it will show you what it looked like on a phone. And that's quite interesting because I know a lot of people do use tablets, they do use phones for their work. And I always want to make sure it's compatible for both. 
So I can see, yeah, I'm happy with that, it looks good. And now I'm gonna share this. So if I go to share, I'm gonna to go to anyone can respond and I can share it a few ways. It will give me a web link. It will also create for me a QR code if I want a QR code or I can embed it. So it will give me an embed. So if I use Moodle or Blackboard, uh, I can embed it and then it'll, I can just put it in as a label or I can email it out to people. But let's just copy the web link. What I'll do is I'll, I'll just put it in the chat box so you can see how it works. And if you click on that link, you can start putting in some of your own answers into this. Again, my, my main aim is to show you the simplicity of creating something like this that you can send out to your students. Say you've, they've watched a, a YouTube video. What I can do is I can put watch the following YouTube video uh, and then give your views on this. What do you think is the best? And as the answers start coming in, or when you log back into the forms, you open up the form document, here we go, I can start to see that responses are coming through. So good old Marlon Brando's um, completed this, which is great. I'm, you know, huge fan, um, much appreciated. But I can start to see straight away that these results are coming in. And this is why I say, if you're doing any sort of research project questionnaire, use forms. It, it's you can see it's one it's a lot more professional looking too it's a lot easier to understand and see the data as it comes in and um, the interesting thing that's quite well especially for those that are teaching um if i go to view results what i can do and this is something that you should really look at is look at the time it took to complete um i set some work previously which was uh, using a form and you know, I think there was like one student who took maybe about nine minutes to complete the task. And, you know, I can see the average time it took for all my students. Um, one student turned their computer on, opened it, forgot about it and left their computer on. So it took them about 13 hours to do it, which was always quite interesting. Again, with forms, I can go back through and I can see the individual results of each learner. And I can go to, if I go back, I can see the whole group. And what forms will do is it will collate all that information. You know, so 38.5% of you dislike it a lot, 15.4% really love it. And it gives me this information straight away. The other use for, again, with forms, if you are going to use this, is I can open an Excel and it will collate all that information into an Excel spreadsheet for me. Now, this is why I say if I send it out to, if it's not internal to an organization, it will come up as anonymous. If you send it to within an organization who uses Office 365, it will come up with their email address, which is where I understand where they're from. And that's why I always say put their name. And I can go through and I can take this data and I can play around with it. Show of hands who remembers that advert. We'll go from there. And that's, again, we can see how we're starting to take this idea of voting and uh, collaborating on ideas to a bigger level, just purely from going, instead of having, what's your vote? And they vote. I want to go, well, what's your vote? Why do you think that? Maybe then I can share these results, you know, because I can take these results, what I've done previously, is I've taken people's opinions. Um, so if I go to open up an Excel again, here we go, and I can copy and paste these longer texts and I can go, okay, that's, you know, that's a, an idea I'll put on a jam board and then I'll put it in front of the class and I go, okay, well, let's discuss what people's opinions are here. And it is a useful tool for that. Any questions at all on using uh, Microsoft Forms? There is one other thing I do want to share as well. This is something I, I've shown before, um, but I want you to have a look. So say, for example, I've got this as a student. This is one of the things that we are hoping to do a session on in the future, which is looking at uh, inclusive practice with digital learning. Uh, and those who were with me in the summer, the last couple of summers, really, um, immersive reader. And I think this is one of the benefits of using someone like Microsoft Forms. 
uh, over some of the other tools. So what you'll notice when you go onto this Google form here, this Microsoft form, you'll see this little logo here, the book and the speaker. And what I can do is I can click on that as a learner. And immersive reader, I can change the text to make it suitable. I can increase the text size. So if I do have the questionnaire, I can increase the spacing or reduce the spacing. I can change the background color to best support my needs. What I can also do with this is I can also change the language. So if I want to change it into Welsh, there we go. Um, this is something where I can then have it and I can also have it. Um, and hopefully from what people have told me, it's not too bad for the, the translation. Um, so hopefully it's quite good it does have quite a large vocabulary on there. So something like this does make it quite an inclusive tool. And I do quite like that. And what I will do is I will share my screen back. So that is a, a kind of a really good feature of creating something on Microsoft Forms is that it is, it is useful for learners with uh, a range of specific needs. Any questions on forms, whack them in the, the, uh, the chat box. Again, with this, if you do use Google Classrooms and you want to use a Microsoft form, all you have to do is go to share and copy the link and put the link in. So if I copy the link, go to my, my Google Classroom. I, I can do a few things with it. I can either put it as a hyperlink, say, in the discussion page. So I can, you know, just do that, or actually probably more neater. If you are gonna put it as a hyperlink, actually add the, the link there. There we go. So I can drop it that way, and then all they have to do is they click on it, or I can set it as an assignment, and that's fine. So the immersive reader option, you'll only, you, you should, if you use the, the online 365, it's the online version of it. So you should be able to see it. Once you click on the, uh, the one I've sent out to you, you should be able to uh, see. So if you uh, say for, this is the student one, you should be able to see that on your web page right now. You won't see it if you're making it. So as I'm making it here, I can't see immersive reader, but you should see it as the user, um, that question there but it is a feature of the, the 365, the online package, and you can only complete this online. So make sure it's the one that I've just sent to you there that you're checking for that document. And that's the, the key things I wanted to look at tonight, really. So, you know, I, I do hope, one, I've not spoken too fast. I do know that Beth and Lisa are recording this, so it is available to rewatch. Um, I hope some of the ideas have proven useful, have proven beneficial for you. If there's anything that you do want us to look at in the future, please do pop it in the chat box. I saw that someone put one on earlier. So what I am going to do, I'm gonna to have to have a look at that one and I will get back to you, Helen, if that's okay. But if there's any more, please pop it in the chat box. Um, the next session, which will be going live very soon, possibly, um, not sure when Lisa's going to put that live. Is it live already, Lisa? Uh, but we'll be looking at gamification. Yeah, I'll pop the link in now. Brilliant. So we're going to be looking at, in the next session, we're going to be looking at gamification and gamifying the digital classroom. Um, I am going to be looking at Canva again. Um, I didn't want to do a whole hour on Canva. Uh, what I wanted to look at was using Canva to create gamified settings. Um, but if there's anything else, pop it in the chat box. And I really hope that tonight has been useful for you. And um, I thank you for coming along. So thank you very much, guys. Really much appreciated.